Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. In continuity with the previous lectures, today we will be dealing with one of the very useful topics in your everyday practice as well as quite frequently asked in your theory as a short notes and very frequently asked also in your oral exams. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. They will be useful to fourth year student, third year also, and also to your first year, second year also. Some of the topics may be very useful to those people also. So today we are going to discuss regarding two common short notes. One is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Second is orthopnea. <clears throat> And as far as oral exam is concerned, very frequently you can be asked in your oral regarding platypnea and tripopnea. So we'll be mentioning little bit regarding that. It can be asked in your oral as what is what do you mean by platypnea? What do you mean by tripopnea? What will be the complaint in the patient? So we'll be discussing under different headings as a short note. So before we go to a topic, just little highlight. I'm brushing up very fast. Right heart failure will not produce PND or orthopnea. So if there's a failure of the right side of the heart, it does not produce pulmonary edema. And as it does not produce pulmonary edema, it will not end up with orthopnea or it will not end up with paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So in a right heart failure, mainly you will get congestion of all the different organs, hepatomegaly, planomegaly, edema, ascites, weight gain, oliguria. So that will be the peculiar thing what will be happening in a right heart failure. And along with that, you will have a JVP being elevated. While in case of a left heart failure, you will have a pulmonary congestion leading to pulmonary edema, impair oxygen exchange that will lead to cyanosis and severe hypoxia. And because of pulmonary edema, you will get paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, orthopnea, and person very frequently will complain of cuff with frothy sputum. And sometimes it is also described as cuff with blood stained frothy sputum because it contains little amount of RBC. So this is just a little highlight. So if it is asked in your oral, what are the causes of orthopnea? Don't mention right heart failure. So orthopnea and PND, you will come across commonly in case of a left heart failure only, not in a case of a right heart failure because pulmonary edema is common in left heart failure rather than right heart failure. So what do you mean by PND? PND means acute shortness of breath and cup where person sits on one side of the bed or walk around in the room and is gasping for breath. He rushes to the open window, attempts to get a good air and improves after a few minutes. This particular situation is described as PND. So to further go, person when he goes into a supine posture during night, after few hours of recumbent position or we call supine position, person will have a severe attack of acute shortness of breath with cough and he will need to sit or walk around and try to get more breath try to attempt to get more air and then after a few minutes he becomes all right he improves and he can go back to sleep that's the reason why it is called paroxysmal as it comes during a night during a recumbent position after a few hours that's why it is mentioned nocturnal and person is becoming severely breathless so it is called dyspnea and that is the exact 
meaning of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea person will go to a window wait for a while after few minutes he will improve and he may go back to sleep again so it is also defined as acute episode of shortness of breath cough and generally occurs at night and because of that shortness of breath person is awakened from sleep usually after 1 to 3 hours of recline position or we call supine position it is very frequently associated with cough with or without wheeze and this particular mechanism this is because of increase pressure in a bronchial arteries leading to airway compression and interstitial pulmonary edema and because of that there will be increase airway resistance this is the mechanism which is taking place in a case of a pnd there are other explanation for pnd one as you lie down flat there is a increase venous return because of increase venous return there is a more blood which is coming to the right side of the heart and as more blood comes to the right side of the heart more blood from a right atrium goes to the rv it will go to the lung via pulmonary artery and it will result into increased pulmonary edema because left ventricle is just decompensating and this will take few minutes to hours by and large after 2 to 3 hours and when the person is in a supine posture all fluid what is accumulating in the lung settles down at the bottom reducing the lung compliance and that's the reason why the person will start now feeling breathless and when he acquires an erect posture all the fluid will go to the base this particular part of the lung what we call as the upper part of the lung will give a better oxygen exchange and person will start improving at the same time in an erect posture the venous return will reduce to the right side of the heart hence blood from ra to rv will be less and from rv to pulmonary artery will be less hence pulmonary edema will also reduce and that will improve the lung compliance and also oxygenation thus person will feel better this is one mechanism what is being explained second mechanism they say that during night respiratory center becomes less responsive and as it is less responsive to a hypoxia it does not respond well person will not have increase in respiratory rate on the top there is decrease in the respiratory rate there is decrease respiratory effort and there is a decrease oxygen saturation and all this mechanism will give rise to breathlessness and this is one of the reason during night because respiratory center is less responsive the person will respond little late and that will give rise to classical what we call as a paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and third mechanism they say that during night there is a decreased response of adrenal gland there is a decreased release of adrenaline and because of decreased release of adrenaline the myocardium is relaxed and there is a decreased cardiac function thus cardiac output is reduced oxygenation is reduced and that is also one of the factor which can increase paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea so there are three mechanism one because of posture second because of respiratory center is becoming less responsive and third because of decrease adrenaline secretion during night so these are all the mechanism what are working during paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea this is very frequently asked in oral you must be able to explain all these three mechanism at least you should be able to explain this posture mechanism that is very very important so it is because of rv overload so there is an increase overload on the right side leading to edema and fluid so there will be increase edema in the lungs and that will give rise to dyspnea and this will happen after few hours 
and there is also effect on the sympathetic outflow during night there is a decrease sympathetic activity and because of decrease sympathetic activity there is a decrease adrenaline release and there will be decrease action on the heart leading to decrease cardiac function decrease ejection fraction and thus further aggravating pnd also during rem sleep the person will have increase episodes of rem sleep and during that particular time the person will have a decrease release of adrenaline decreasing the sympathetic outflow and also aggravating further the left ventricular ejection hence la pressure will be elevated which will further elevate the pulmonary vase pressure leading to pulmonary edema these are all the different mechanism which has been explained and pnd we put into nyha classification that is new york heart association classification wise class 3 class 3 while orthopnea is class 4 so this is the mechanism which has been explained as far as pathophysiology is concerned while orthopnea it is a condition in which person is already breathless and when person goes to the supine posture he becomes more breathless and within few seconds to a minute person will acquire a sitting posture or orthopnic posture and he will have a partial relief of dyspnea not complete relief of dyspnea so it is relieved by sitting up posture or elevation of the head with pillow means acquiring a sitting posture with back rest or by supporting the head by pillow and person feels better but it is not completely cured or not completely relieved while in case of a pnd when person acquires a sitting posture or a erect posture moves about in a room or goes to a window after few minutes of erect posture because of decrease venous return now there is an improvement in the left ventricular function because of decrease volume overload pulmonary edema reduces person feels better and person can go back to sleep again here as soon as he again goes back to sleep in orthopnea again he will become markedly breathless and that is in few minutes sometime in seconds not a very long period now that's the reason why it is said that person will become markedly breathless within one or two minutes after lying down maybe supine posture maybe prone posture maybe right lateral posture or maybe left lateral posture any posture but recumbent position this is very very important now suppose if a person says that he is comfortable in one lateral position and he becomes breathless by changing the posture to another lateral position then it is called tripopnea and if the person says that in a supine posture he is comfortable and he becomes breathless in a erect posture or in a sitting posture then it is called tripopnea sorry platypnea that is platypnea so do remember these two terms will be coming across that so orthopnea will be dyspnea in a recumbent position the mechanism is redistribution of the fluid from the periphery that is abdomen and lower limbs will be returning to the right side increase right side blood volume leading to further pulmonary congestion and pulmonary edema and person will start becoming more breathless and this will happen in few minutes sometime even in seconds so that is very very peculiar and here the person while he acquires a sitting posture or say we call orthopnic posture or he acquires a posture by increasing the head position by taking few pillows the venous return is reduced person is relieved partially not completely and this condition is called orthopnea now this orthopnic person person will also become more breathless 
if he has got severe obesity and ascites because that will further elevate the diaphragm diaphragm movement will be reduced and that may aggravate the symptoms of orthopnea in supine posture so that is regarding orthopnea so mechanism we have already explained there is increased venous return on the right side increased blood will go to the lung more pulmonary edema less blood will come to the la less blood will go to the lv and that will further worsen pulmonary edema and orthopnea as soon as he acquires an erect posture the venous return to the right side of the heart is reduced hence less blood goes to the pulmonary artery less blood goes to the lung there will be reduction in a pulmonary edema hence lung compliance will increase oxygenation will improve person will feel better but it will not completely relieve orthopnea so in a standing or sitting posture blood redistribution more in the lower limb because of gravity and that will reduce your venous return to the right side of the heart while in a lying down posture more blood will go to the lung and that will increase the intrapulmonary pressure leading to further pulmonary edema and worsening in case of a left ventricular failure or we call left ventricular failure leading to pulmonary edema so because of increased venous return in a supine posture it will further worsen and when acquires a erect posture or by taking few pillows the venous return from the abdomen is reduced also from lower limb is reduced pulmonary congestion reduces and person will improve but it will not completely disappear these are few terms which we have already explained in a vital signs of respiratory system we have explained all eupnea tachypnea bradypnea apnea hyperapnea chain stroke breathing bard's breathing kusmal's breathing apneustic breathing etc all this terminology i have already explained very frequently ask in your oral again repeatedly see this particular slide very very useful very frequently a few terms may be asked to you in your oral so this is a slide for your oral exams occasionally a short note is asked on a chain stroke breathing may be asked on a kusmal's breathing not very common but may be asked chain stroke and kusmal's breathing you should be able to write down a short note on that this already we have explained tachypnea means increase in the respiratory rate more than 24 per minute hyperapnea means increase in the minute ventilation where the depth is increased dyspnea on exertion is dyspnea is provoked by physical exertion orthopnea means person becomes more breathless in recumbent position and person is partially relieved by sitting up posture or orthopnic posture or we call as a two or three pillow is taken to support the head and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is after a recumbent position after few hours probably two to three hours person becomes breathless he wakes up and after 10 to 15 minutes of erect posture now person feels better and he can go back to sleep this is classically described as paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea all these terms we have already explained before now there are two additional term that is platypnea meaning person is breathless in a sitting posture and he is better in lying down posture this is just opposite of what we call is orthopnea i'll be showing you one slide and then i'll be explaining you what exactly happens in platypnea and there is one another condition we call is a tripopnea where person is breathless in one lateral position in a lateral decubitus position and when it turns to a opposite side say if he is breathless on a right lateral position if he turns to the left lateral position person starts feeling better that is called tripopnea so i'll be giving you a little description of these two term platypnea and tripopnea platy means flat and tripopnea is one side so one lateral position we call tripopnea so this is absolutely supine posture 
and if he becomes breathless within seconds or minutes it is orthopnea and he gets relief by sitting posture and it is not a complete relief but partial relief but suppose person is breathless in this position and this is what we call is a right lateral position now if he turns to the left lateral position he is comfortable then we call that as a tripopnea now for explaining this particular term i will have to show you one slide so i'll go to that slide later on usually this is very common in two common condition we call as a left atrial myxoma or in case of ball wall thrombus or a big thrombus in la so to explain that i will have to have show you one photographs so that i think it is here yeah, yes so if a person acquires an erect posture so if there is a left atrial myxoma with a peduncle because of gravity if it is in such a situation that in an erect posture if because of gravity it occludes the mitral valve opening then there will be no blood flowing from la into lv so la pressure will be elevated pulmonary vein pressure will be elevated pulmonary wedge pressure will be elevated leading to worsening of pulmonary edema and that will produce dyspnea acute dyspnea in erect posture now when he goes to a supine posture because of gravity now that particular myxoma or a thrombus myxoma or a thrombus gets separated from the mitral valve opening now mitral valve opens up there is no obstruction hence blood will easily flow from la to lv pressure in la will fall pressure in left sorry in pulmonary vein will fall pulmonary wedge pressure will fall and there will be improvement in pulmonary edema and this is classically described as platypnea same thing if suppose it is in such a position in a la when he acquires a say right lateral position so because of gravity now that left atrial myxoma or a left atrial thrombus occludes the mitral valve opening it will give rise to tripopnea so platypnea and tripopnea sometime may be seen in the same patient with different position so when it occurs in a direct posture we call platypnea and when it occurs in a one lateral decubitus position we call as a tripopnea also there is one more thing what is happening in a platypnea is when a person acquires an erect posture if the person has got a av shunt which are present in an erect posture this av shunts are open and because av shunts are open now blood will flow very rapidly through this artery into the vein and hence the rapidity of the blood flow so perfusion is better than ventilation so there is a ventilation perfusion coefficient difference and because of that ventilation perfusion coefficient difference there is less oxygenation and person will feel breathless now this will happen in a erect posture now when a person goes to the supine posture now because the abdominal viscera etc are not push down because of gravity gravity is not working so they will push the diaphragm up and as the diaphragm is pushed up the lung ventilation is reduced this av malformation av malformation or we call shunt those shunt are compressed hence the blood flow will reduce it will improve the oxygenation because now vq coefficient will improve and that will improve the oxygenation so ventilation will be better perfusion is little bit less and that will improve your what we call the oxygenation part of it and person will feel better this is one way of explanation as far as the va shunt is concerned so this is a typical what we call is a av malformation which will be opening up in a erect posture leading to less oxygenation 
PQ mismatch leading to decreased oxygenation and hypoxia and person will feel breathless and when the person acquires a supine posture this particular will collapse or will be compressed hence oxygenation will be better mismatch will be reduced and that will improve the oxygenation and person will feel better and this is the reason why what we call is a hepatopulmonary syndrome one of the mechanism in hepatopulmonary syndrome that in this particular cirrhosis there are av malformation which are very frequently seen in a pulmonary circulation and hence it will produce what we call is a platypnea so second name for platypnea is ortho deoxia also ortho means erect so person get deoxygenated during erect posture and that's why it is also called as ortho deoxia and person when he goes to the supine posture he is well oxygenated hence the term utilized is ortho deoxia also and same thing is called platypnea in direct way platypnea can be also quite common in case of a recurrent pulmonary embolism it may be seen also in case of a severe emphysema also in case of a patent foramen oval in this three condition there is a vq mismatch and it can produce platypnea but another classical example is av malformation in lung which is very common because of cirrhosis and it can end up with a hepatopulmonary syndrome there is another mechanism also with hepatopulmonary syndrome that is nitric oxide mechanism we'll be discussing that particular mechanism some other time but because of av malformation i already explained in erect posture because of gravity the viscera is down diaphragm is pushed down diaphragm will move well so av malformation will open up and when av malformation opens up there is a vq mismatch and because of vq mismatch there is a poor oxygenation leading to hypoxia and person will feel breathless and that is called platypnea so understand that very well so person will complain classically that i am having a problem in breathing while i am sitting up or i am in a erect posture just opposite of orthopnea so platypnea is flat person becomes more breathless ideally when he is flat but this particular term is not a proper terminology so person is feeling breathless when he is acquiring a erect posture erect posture so person is having shortness of breath in a sitting up posture and it is relieved by recumbent position and hence this is taken into account that person by acquiring a flat position person becomes breathless no platypnea means flat breathlessness it is a wrong term ideally the person by acquiring a erect posture so it should be utilized ortho deoxia and hence ortho deoxia is a better term rather than platypnea it is a opposite of orthopnea it is opposite of orthopnea do remember this platy means always flat so person is becoming breathless in a flat position that ideally should be for orthopnea but instead of that we are using a platypnea that is person is comfortable in supine posture or recumbent position and he becomes breathless when he gets up that is ideally a platypnea but you have to understand that pause properly platy means flat apnea or dyspnea meaning breathlessness but here the shortness of breathlessness is on a sitting up posture and it is relieved by lying down posture it is just opposite of orthopnea and we label that as platypnea and tripopnea is one lateral decubitus position and that i have already explained in this particular slide this will be very very peculiar which will explain both platypnea as well as tripopnea so in one lateral decubitus position if it occludes it can produce dyspnea and that will be labeled as tripopnea because of gravity 
this particular what we call is a left atrial myxoma or left atrial thrombus will move because of gravity or because of no gravity and that will occlude or that will be away from the mitral valve opening according to nyha classification dyspnea is divided into class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 class 3 is classical example of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and class 4 is a classical example of orthopnea if you just go through a etiology orthopnea is classical because of a acute left ventricular failure or we call pulmonary edema and secondary to that you may develop a right ventricular failure then we use the word congestive heart failure hence the common term which is being utilized is congestive heart failure but better terminology is a left ventricular failure in a early left ventricular failure or we call compensated left ventricular failure or early lv dysfunction these are the term which can be utilized in that particular there is a very very high chance of getting pnd so pnd will be very common in a lv dysfunction or early left ventricular failure while in a established left ventricular failure the person will develop orthopnea rather than pnd and this failure you can divide into systolic or diastolic or you can call acute or chronic this term you can utilize as far as congestive heart failure systolic or diastolic acute or chronic and we have already explained in pnd that pnd will be because of a just early decompensation or we call lv diastolic dysfunction rather than systolic dysfunction and the commonest cause of left ventricular failure is ischemic heart disease valvular heart disease like aortic stenosis aortic regurgitation mitral regurgitation severe hypertension and sometimes it can be precipitated by arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation in orthopnea apart from orthopnea you get an additional symptoms like swollen feet or we call edema intermittent chest pain cough with frothy sputum and occasionally it may be blood stain frothy sputum in a case of a chronic heart failure usually person will present with dyspnea on exertion cough with frothy sputum or maybe with blood stain frothy sputum orthopnea where person becomes more breathless by lying down posture and may improve by sitting posture orthopnic posture or by taking two or three pillows in a early left ventricular failure person might have a paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and when a person develops a right side failure along with left ventricular failure he will have a peripheral edema ascites hepatomegaly jvp elevated and even splenomegaly best investigation is a clinical assessment by history taking and examination in case of a left ventricular failure you will have a bibasal bilateral basal crackles and when a person develops a right ventricular failure along with lvf we call congestive heart failure person will also have a peripheral edema ascites hepatosplenomegaly hjr will be positive hepatojugular reflux will be positive and in this cases if you do a bnp or n terminal pro bnp this will be elevated very well suggestive of a failure part to confirm and find out the type of damage and severity of a failure part echocardiogram is very useful because depending upon the ejection fraction you can divide into diastolic and systolic less than 40 is systolic ejection fraction less than 40 is systolic and less than 60 will be diastolic dysfunction up to 40 ecg will be helpful to find out the chamber hypertrophy ischemic heart disease and cardiac arrhythmias management is one posture in orthopnea acquiring a sitting posture or orthopnic posture is very very helpful or by taking a back rest at 45 degree is also helpful if back rest is not available person can become comfortable by taking two pillow three pillow four pillow and 
having a head elevation another thing which is very helpful is a diuretic because it will reduce a volume overload on the venous side that is a right atrium and that will also improve or you can lie down on a tilt table table like this with a head up position not head low position head up position these are some of the mechanism by which the person can improve and then you have to treat the basic etiology so there is a nice guideline which was published in 2018 and there is an update coming on every time so while you are managing such patient always check bnp or we call n terminal pro bnp and depending upon that you can decide regarding an acute if bnp is more than 2000 it is an emergency person should be hospitalized and treated and if the bnp is less than 2000 you can go for a routine treatment but still you must have an close observation you must discuss with the patient regarding the prognosis regarding the etiology what precaution is supposed to take everything should be explained then you can go for a medical management and in some condition particularly say like mr or ar or as you might require a surgical intervention like valve replacement and in case of heart failure which we call is a chronic heart failure which are not responding to medical treatment you might require an assisted device like left ventricular assisted device or crt or you can go for what we call as intra cardiac devices in a person who are likely to develop a cardiac arrhythmias particularly fetal cardiac arrhythmias but crt will be very very useful we call as a cardiac resynchronization therapy so additional think should be done in a person who are having a chronic heart failure particularly every year person should be vaccinated for flu and pneumococcal vaccine to prevent acute on chronic core pulmonary stop smoking treatment should be optimized and you should treat simultaneously comorbid conditions and person should be explained regarding an exercise depending upon the clinical status and depending upon his tolerance we call calculated exercise should be advised under a close observation as far as the medical management is concerned ace inhibitor beta blocker aldosterone antagonist and loop diuretics becomes the main pillar in treatment among the ace inhibitor remipril is the first drug of choice we call as ace inhibitors second drug is candesertan which is another drug of choice which is from what we call as arb and they are usually not preferred if the person is having valvular heart disease beta blocker very frequently the common drugs metoprolol and bisoprolol are the drug of choice in case of a, what we call as heart failure aldosterone antagonist are used along with diuretics to reduce the side effects of diuretic and to also have a additional benefit effects and particularly spironolactone is most commonly utilized and if doesn't give good result then epileron can be utilized among the loop diuretics prosamide is most commonly being utilized another common is torsamide and during the use of loop diuretics and aldosterone particularly and ace inhibitors because loop diuretic will produce hypokalemia aldosterone is known to produce hyperkalemia ace inhibitor is also supposed to produce hyperkalemia so you must keep a close observation for electrolyte imbalance particularly potassium and sodium imbalance this is a prime thing should be done so i end my lecture here i feel this lecture will be very helpful to you in your oral exam as well as in your theory exam and also in your everyday practice this is mainly for educative purpose but if you understand this particular topic nicely you will be able to identify those particular pnd orthopnea tripopnea platypnea etc and then you can investigate and you can come to the diagnosis and you can advise a proper treatment so at the end of this lecture i thank you all for taking out time 
I know that your time is very very valuable and I appreciate you for spending some of the time with me. If you feel this lecture is helpful to you, you can press button like and if you are not subscribed, you can subscribe so you can get an intimation, you can press a bell icon and if you feel that this is also helpful to your friends, you can share with your friends. So I thank you again. We'll see you in next lecture.